the concept of limits. Now, let's talk about limits. Now, to understand it better, we start with the question that there's a function that is given to us, and it is asking what is f2. So now, if I try to solve this for f2, I'm going to see that my f2 is equal to 2 squared minus 4 over 2 minus 2, 0 over 0, which is not defined. Therefore, I'm going to say my f2 does not exist. And as we can see, there's a hole at 2, the graph of the function. So now, let's change the question we have a little bit. How does the fx, this is our fx, behaves when our x values gets closer to 2? Yes, the function is not defined at 2, there's a hole, but what happens if I try to get closer to 2? So now, I'm seeing that. Let's say I pick a value from here. I'm going to see that when I pick this, I'm extremely close to 4, but there's a hole at 4. And when I pick from the right side of 2, I'm also seeing that I'm really close to 4 again, but I am not equal to 4. There's a hole there. For those who never saw it before, this will be a really new concept. We will say that the limit of fx as x approached to 2 is equal to 4. So what does this mean? This means that when I approach 2 for the function I have, I'm seeing that the values are getting so close to the 4 that I'm going to say this limit is equal to 4. So basically what we're doing is Instead of putting the value of the function, which does, not, which, which does not exist in this situation, we try to approach it from left and right. So now to understand it, of course, we need to check out the definition and informal view. So when our x is really close to a, and our, our a is from the set of r, but it is not equal to it, if the value of x of fx approached to only one L value, we will say limit of fx as x approached to A is equal to L. Now let's try to visualize this a little bit more. So let's draw a completely random graph here that doesn't have to be anything. And now of course we need to say that we have an A here. And this is going to be equal to L. So, as we can see, my FA is equal to L. But to talk about a limit, I need to check that. When I pick something from the left and the right of A that are really close to L, like this and this, these should be really close to L. And in this situation, I'm clearly seeing that from left and the right. When I check it, it's really close to L. Therefore, I can say limit of the function fx as x approached to A is equal to L. So now we have to say that for a limit to exist like this, we need to approach from the left and the right. If we get different values from the left, and the right, that means our limit does not exist. And another note that we should add, add here is for our function to have a limit, it does not have to be defined. It can be defined or not, but it doesn't have to do anything with the limit. We will see what should we say for a limit to exist in this video. Okay. Now we have a really simple example to understand the concept better. So another function given to us, and it's asking limit of fx as x approach to 1. So my 1 is here, which is 2. I'm clearly seeing that my f1 is equal to 2, right? And now to say that this limit is existing or not, as we said, we need to check it from the left and the right. So, in simple words, let's try to write this down. 
we need to check from left and right. So when I check it from the left side of the one, I'm seeing that I'm getting closer to two as well. Therefore, I'm going to say my left side is equal to two. And when I do the same for the right side, that I try to get closer, I'm seeing that my right side is also two. Therefore, I'm going to say this limit is equal to two. As we learned, we need to check it from the left and the right. So now I'm seeing that it is two. Another example, limit of fx as x approached to two. Now that we need to check from the left and the right again, I'm not going to write everything down again. Let's check it from the left. When I check it from the left, and before that, let's see, our f2 is equal to 5, clearly, because of the graph is given to us, and we can see that it's 5. So now, when I try to approach 2 from the left side, I'm seeing that it is getting closer to 3. Therefore, for the left side, I'm going to say 3. For the right side, when I approach from the right side of the function I have, I'm seeing that it is 5. So left and right are not equal in this situation. So therefore, I'm going to say this limit does not exist. B and E is the shortcut of it. So now we're ready to talk about one-sided limits. It's not different that it's not different from what we learned, but it's of course we're not going to say left and right. There's a mathematical way to show this, of course. So let's read the definitions. If the values of fx can be made as close as close as to L by taking the values of our x, it will be so close to A, but it will be greater than a, which means it's the right side of the a. Since it's greater than a, of course it will be the right side of a. Then we write the limit from the right side, of course, and we will show it like this. The right we said earlier is shown like this with the mathematical methods. Limit of fx as x approached to a from the right side, which is greater than a, and it's equal to l in this example. And the other way, if the values of x are less than a, but it is really close to it, then we will write it as limit of fx as x approaches to a from the left side is equal to l. And now we have a graph of fx that is a completely random function. And some questions are asked. But before that, I want to ask something. I'm going to give a little theorem here, which is for our limit fx to be equal to L, we have one condition. And that condition is when I approach to the fx from the left and the right, these values has to be equal and they should be equal to l for example and therefore if this is this is correct therefore we will say the limit of fx as x approach to a is equal to l as we said to talk about a limit we need to check it from the left and the right side so now the graph of the, is given to us graph of fx and some questions asked so of course to understand these, of course, to answer these limits, we need to check the graph here. There are other types of problems, methods. We cannot check the graph all the time, of course, but in this video, that's what we do. In the next videos, we will talk about the other ways. So limit of fx as x approach to negative 5, right? Of course, we said to talk about the limit, we need to check it from the left and the right, and we need to see if they're equal to each other. Therefore, first I'm going to check it from the left side. So I need to find my negative 5. It's here. And when I check it from the left side, I'm seeing that it is equal to 5. When I check it from the left side, I'm seeing that it is 5. And the same way, I'm going to check limit of negative 5 from the right side. 
Now, my negative 5 is here, and the right side of it, as we can see, it is negative 6. Since these are not equal, we will just say that this limit does not exist since these are not equal to each other. Limit of fx as x approaches to negative 2. Of course, the same way, we will have to check the limit from the right and the left. Right means we're checking it for the greater values. Left means we're checking it for the lesser val val values, and therefore, these two has to be equal. Limit of fx as x approaches to negative 2 from the right side. I'm seeing that when I check it for the values greater than negative 2, these are so close to negative 2, but they're not exactly so. And I'm seeing that it is negative 3 here. And now I have to do the same thing for the left side for the lesser values of negative 2, and I'm getting closer, closer, closer. And I'm seeing that this is also 3. This is not negative 3, this is 3. Therefore, my limit is equal to 3. Let's try to move these down a little bit more so we have more space here, like this. Okay. Limit of fx as x approach to 4. Of course, we have to check it from the left. Um, right and the left. And now let's check it from the right first. 4 is here, and when I check it from the right side here, I'm seeing that it is 4. And when I check it from the left side, I'm trying to get closer, closer, closer from the left side, and I'm seeing that it is 2. Since these are not equal to each other, we will have to say this limit does not exist. And lastly, limit of fx at 7. Of course, to talk about this, I will have to check the limit from the left and the right side, um, right side and the left side. So let's check for the right side first. When I try to check it from the right side of it, I'm seeing that my values are going so much that I cannot see where it is. And since this is going to infinity, we will say that limit of fx as x approaches 7 from the right side is going to be infinity because it is going to infinity as we can clearly see in the graph. And the limit of fx as x approaches to 7 from the left side, when I try to approach 7 from the left side, from here, I'm seeing that it is 4. Therefore, this is 4, and clearly these are not equal. Therefore, we will say this limit does not exist.